Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and ladies, welcome to an episode of Tommy Talk. My name is Juan, this is my partner partner Anthony. This is a judo podcast for judo players by two judo players. So as you can see, we're a secure, non-disclosed location called... Hollywood Judo. <laughs> yeah, we're actually doing this podcast today from Hollywood Judo because we had a tournament today here at our here at our dojo. It was a three scrum tournament between... Three, three club. Three club, three yeah. club, between Hollywood, Sawtell, and Gold's Judo. Now, it's the second one we've done... So in this episode, we're actually going to do an interview segment with Gary Goltz, the head instructor of, uh, of Goltz Gold Judo, Judo, Philippe Morote, the head instructor of Hollywood, Hollywood. Judo, and then we're going to do it with Jerry. Jerry, who's uh, a, a, another one of the head senseis in uh, Sawtell, because Kenji, a sensei Kenji Osui, who couldn't make it today. Yeah, so we actually talked to him about it. So first thing, let's get to the news in Judo. So as a lot of you might know, uh, Russia and Ukraine are having a dispute right now. You're a light way of putting it. I don't know how 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 do you want to put I'll it? Just, they're at war. Just okay, they're, they're at war. I, I wanted to get around and stuff, but they're at war right now. So there's actually a lot of news because of this that we have to go through. I know some people might not want to hear about it because oh, I'm tired about hearing about the war. But this stuff is that affects judo directly. So the first thing that happened is that when Russia went into Ukraine, the IGF uh, put a statement out the next day saying that. The IGF is now um, suspending, not revoking, suspending uh, Vladimir Putin's position as being honorary president of the IGF, honorary president, and ambassador to the IGF in, for judo. Because everybody knows out there, if you know about Vladimir Putin, that he loves judo. You know? He is an eighth don in the <laughs> Russian Fed judo federation. He, he's an eighth degree black belt. Yeah, he loves judo, he demonstrates all the time, so he really supports judo, and he supports judo in Russia. So what the IGF did, like their own sanctions pretty much, is to remove him as, as honorary president, which I didn't know he was honorary president. I knew that he was an ambassador, because if you look at the um, United Judo Fund, I think it is, uh -huh. it's run by the Russian, it's run by a Russian organization, I believe, don't quote me on this, I believe that they are. But I've always thought it was weird that their symbol it's the judo, the judo flower, the sakura, but the in the middle is the Russian flag, and most people don't oh. notice that when you first look at it. But I've always, I just, I've always noticed it to me. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. It has the Russian flag right there. Yeah, it's, I never knew that. It's, I'm gonna go home and take a look. Yeah, look yeah. at it. And the watch, I just changed it by now. I'm like, oh, I gotta get rid of that. So that's what happened. But uh, before I continue, I'm wearing a mask because I'm out. I'm getting really bad allergies in the middle. So if you. Look at the interviews in the later segments. Was, he's going to be doing most of the talking because I'm trying not to sneeze the entire time. But As I always do. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just take over stuff. Just... So if I'm sniffling, uh, excuse me. Yeah, so the IGF removed him. A lot of people were mad about the sanctions weren't hard enough. Some people were like, why is he just being suspended? When as soon as they pull out, is he going to be, again, honorary president? Yeah. A lot of countries, a lot of judo players were saying that he should be removed, fully removed, and not be allowed to be an honorary president. But I just is doing this for now. There's still, I mean, there's still politics involved, and we know, like, the not echelon, there's a lot of money and uh, gray area stuff happening so let's just <laughs> like we, we just know there's more to it we're probably. doing something but we're not doing something at the same yeah. time it's one of those things so, so interests involved yeah, yeah. Uh, the other thing that came out right afterwards is that actually the Kazan Grand Grand Kazan that how you say it Kazan yeah Kazan the Kazan uh, Grand Slam that was supposed to be happening in May uh, from the 20th, 20th to the 22nd that was a Russian Grand Slam tournament, has been canceled, yep. been fully canceled. Uh, no one is sending their players to Russia right now. So the Kazan Grand Slam has been suspended. So anyone that was planning to go there or was thinking about getting points there now, again, have to change your thing because like we talked about last time, Dusseldorf. Yeah, they were having like back-to-back -back tournaments every other week or every week trying to catch up on points. Now yeah. it's like, okay, now that's ruined. How's that going to work, right? Yeah, because now you're losing Dusseldorf. And now you're going to lose this one also, the Russian tournament. And the next one too, right? Uh, that's, yeah, because um, yeah, it was supposed to be, because we had, um, in April, it's going to be the Turkish Grand Slam. Uh -huh. And then May was going to be Kazakh, was going to be Russia. And then the month after that, that was supposed to be Dusseldorf. That was going to be in June. 
Okay? We're still having the Mongolian one, as far as I know. I haven't heard anything about the Mongolian one being canceled. But what also is being canceled, that's what was supposed to happen in March, because of what's happening right now with the war in Russia and Ukraine, um, the Georgian tournament. And uh, how do you say that name right there? T Tbilisi. Tbilisi tournament. That's actually where one of our members are from. Is yeah. he from Tbilisi? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, cool. His hometown. Hey, shout out right there for Tbilisi. Uh, because of the wars happening right now, Tbilisi has been, I don't know if they've chosen themselves or IGF or what decided that. We're not going to hold a tournament right now because it was, again, supposed to happen right now in March. And I don't know if because people don't want to send their players there. Well, Georgia is bordering Russia yeah. and, and Ukraine and stuff, so it's kind of like... Yeah, yeah. It's a, I think it's more about people's safety that they don't want to send people out there in case something happens. Okay, it'll know? be crazy if we start to see a Grand Prix or Grand Slam in America. Or, <laughs> we might get one or, in the US. Or in Australia or New Zealand where it's far away from Europe because tensions are so high right now. Yeah. People are concerned about safety. We need a Mexico Grand Slam, a U.S. Grand Slam, a yeah. Canadian Grand Slam. Why not? <laughs> Bring them here. I mean, uh, the Japanese airline, ANA, they uh -huh. actually canceled all flights, all routes to Europe. Oh, not, not all to Europe To itself. Europe in general. Because oh, they're wow. afraid, they're afraid of like you know, like what happened when last you're time. You're flying over, and you make a shot. At. Russia actually accidentally shot down. Well, yeah. allegedly, Supposedly. allegedly, we don't shot, <laughs> shot down a passenger airline last yeah. time. There was a on accident. They thought it yeah, was, there was a conflict. Oh, in allegedly, Ukraine. they thought it was something else. So I guess like they're they're being careful. So they cancel yeah. all flights to Europe. So yeah. so but, yeah, the Georgian tournament again. You had a thing like one of our players actually Isaiah, one of the guys that's on the U.S. national yeah. team for us was planning to go to this tournament and he can't go now, so he has to plan to go to another tournament instead. Yep. Which, um... In Africa? Gonna, yeah, I think he was gonna go to the African tournament. I don't have the date on that one right here. I don't have it yeah. listed. But his plan was to go to the African one now, which other people are probably gonna have to go to now also. But yeah, so we... The Russian tournament got canceled. The Georgian tournament is being suspended. It's gonna be moved to another time. They don't know when yet, when it's gonna happen. I'm thinking that they might switch it with the Russian tournament or what Dusseldorf was supposed to happen, because those two tournaments were supposed to happen in um, May and June. So yeah, switch it to May or June, but yeah. it all depends on tensions, what happens. If the war's still going on, they still, not wanna, might, they still might not wanna send people out there. The whole reason why they yeah. don't wanna send people to Russia right now, all right? I mean, Canada has already held a Grand Slam, though the attendance wasn't high, so it wouldn't be too crazy of an idea to hold another Grand Slam in Canada. Why not? Bring one to North America, like Or what they might do is, uh, promote a lot of the Grand Prix in upcoming uh, tournaments into a Grand Slam so they're worth more points. Yeah. So uh, we'll see, time will tell. Yeah. So that's Judo update right now about the news in Judo. Things getting canceled, things getting changed. Vladimir Putin being, being taken off as an honorary president. Uh, now onto some lighter, was there anything else that I, in the news that I'm forgetting? No, the, this, no, I think that was it. Yeah. That's the big news in Judo? That's big news. Okay. so. Like we are saying, so today our dojo had a um, crosstown tournament. We invited three of the dojos to come over. This is our second time having it. And today we had 31 matches. Yeah, 31. Well, more than that because we had a, ex <laughs> exhibition, a lot so of exhibition matches. People were happy. To, yeah, it was supposed to be a uh, little like three-man brackets. You fight two guys. Not, not isn't like four um, points. Well, it's four points. It's like little self points and stuff. Like whatever dojo does the best and stuff. But it's supposed to be like a little fun scrimmage. You get used to competing with somebody different in a tournament setting with people watching you. You get a little bit of pressure on you. So it's the second time we've had it. We had, it was scheduled for 31 matches, was our originally scheduled. And we did 31 matches in 55 minutes. Yeah, it was fast. We, we, we say it's an hour, but literally it was like 50, 55 minutes because yeah. it was just some fast matches. People were going in 30 seconds, one minute, finishing matches because I don't, it was pressure, but not too much pressure. Some people weren't going as hard as they normally would go to a tournament, yeah. I thought, watching it. Yeah. Um, what we also did today is that for the first time, you might have seen it on our thing, but we actually uh, live streamed it on Twitch. Yep. So if you got a chance to watch it, let us know how it streamed, if it worked for you, if it didn't work for you, a lot of buffering, if you guys were confused about stuff, you guys didn't see stuff. Oh, that's one thing if you guys were confused about. So we did an old school thing today where we had a red side and a white side. I know most people are used to white and blue. Yeah. And like, what is this red side thing? And why are people wearing red belts over it, their belts? Yeah, if you watch Kodakon uh, or some of the Japanese tournaments, they actually have red and white still. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the, the reason that is because that's the original way of doing it. Remember, blue geese only came into fashion in the 80s, early 90s? 
Yeah, well, uh, Anton Giesink. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he was wearing it back in like the 60s, I believe. Yeah. He was wearing it. But it didn't become popular and become an IGF thing until, I want to say late 80s, but I don't know off the top of my head. I know definitely by the 90s, that's when it started coming to yeah. play. But before that, both sides wore white geese and one person wore a red belt on over their black belt yep. usually and the other person just wore their black belt. Or they had a black belt with a white belt on top of it. Very confusing sometimes, yeah. which also confuse people today. <laughs> For those of you who are in the California area, um, you, you will remember back in the day before COVID, uh, they held a Kohaku tournament every year. Mm -hmm. And in Japan, they have a Kohaku tournament too, and a Kodokan is a monthly one. Yeah. And Kohaku literally means red-white, the red-white belt tournament. Yeah. So and that's, that's where why it comes from. Little side note there, that's why if you see them at tournaments, why are you coughing all over the place? Sorry. I have a mask off. This guy's coughing all over me here. And it's actually our first time being together doing this since our yeah, first podcast. Yeah, we're actually on Tatami talking this time. Yeah, Tatami talk. This is what Tatami talk was meant to be, pretty much. Two guys casually talking. But yeah, if you go to Kohaku, you're going to see them put up that weird banner thing that's the red and white stripes. Yeah. That's what it's for. Kohaku is supposed to be red and white. And also, if you're Japanese, you watch that uh, red and white <laughs> performance for our New Year's every yeah. year, too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my throat. Normally, I have tea or something with me, but I have soda today. <laughs> Actually, I lie. Normally, I have a soda with me anyways. <laughs> but that was kind of interesting we did that today. Um, in the end, what was the... Um, now, this is just me blowing two to my own Hollywood judo horn. What was the scores in the end? 15... Hollywood, I think it was 11 golds, and then uh, I don't remember what Sawtell was, but yeah. yeah. So, yes, Hollywood, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But it was nice having people come over, practice, doing stuff, having to fight, live rounds and stuff. So what we did with that we wanted to do last time, but we changed it up and we actually did it this time, surprisingly, is we actually got to interview Gary Goltz about this, Sensei Philippe about this, and Jerry about this, about how this came about, how they brought this together. Was it tough to bring people into it? Were they confused about it when, he first, when Philippe brought this up to them first? And just what were their thoughts on it? Does this work for you? What do you think about this? Yeah. The basic things. Yeah. Is that it? That was you, it. That, that's a good intro right there? Yeah. All right. So without any further ado, let's get to the interview. Hey, everybody. My name is Juan. This is Anthony. We're here interviewing Gary Gold, head of Gary <laughs> Gold's Judo. Now, today we had a. Uh, Tournament scrimmage where we had Gold's Judo versus Hollywood Judo versus Sawtelle Judo. So, Mr. Gold, how did this come about? How did Sensei Fleet contact you about making this tournament? Well, he and I are good friends for, for decades since I lived in California since the 80s. And uh, he had this idea a couple months ago, put it together, it went so smooth. You know, if it worked once, it was all, all worth doing again. Uh -huh. And now he wants to do a third. Yeah, since if we tell you want to do like every three months, and this is pretty yeah. good because in California we've had like really strict restrictions here, and we haven't had a lot of gym yeah. tournaments. So doing this, I think, really gets people's feet still wet, gets yeah. you still working and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. This, the, and, and, the, and the clubs involved are very traditional, strong, technical judo clubs, and, and, and it showed. I mean, if you watch the matches closely today, there were a lot of epon throws and uh, some excellent, excellent uh, judo. You know, the technical kind of judo that uh, I grew up with. And, uh, you know, I think as a judo purist, that's, that's, it, that's what you want to see. You want to see people, you know, using uh, good, good technique and, uh, you know, lots of lots of aerial throws and lots of action. I mean, it, it just, it, it, it's what makes judo stand out from the other martial arts, in my opinion. It's great. Like, I know one thing we did today, since the last term we did was last year, technically, in November, yep. so we had the old rules. Today was the first time we actually tried to enforce the new rules. What do you think of the new rules being enforced today? Do you, do you think the, the new rules aren't, aren't, aren't significantly uh, changed. I mean, in fact, they're an improvement. You know, some of the gripping moves and some of the calls. Uh, you know, it, it, people have to understand what motivates uh, the IJF, and I learned this firsthand from my good friend Gary Takamoto, who is an Olympic, who is an Olympic referee, referee in Rio. It, it, if, you, if judo is, a, especially for the IJF and Marcus Wieser, it's all about ratings. Ratings on TV. And I'll tell you what gets ratings on TV. Beautiful action judo. I mean, high throws, beautiful. I mean, you know, let's 
face it, you watch MMA, you watch BJJ, you know, a lot of their moves are on the ground and they just don't have the pizzazz and the panache and the judo, the throw, the beautiful Sionagi, the beautiful uh, Uchimara, Tomoe Nagi, you know, a foot sweep, a counter, I mean, you know, somebody's down at the end by like a wasari and has like all these shitos and then last second of the golden scorer they pull off a beautiful baton. I mean, you know, it's phenomenal. Judo is exciting to watch and, uh, and, and the IJF wants to uh, permeate that kind of judo. I mean, when, when the rules started to change, it was during the time when the uh, IOC was looking at eliminating wrestling from uh, the Olympics. And the reason they said that was it's kind of boring. You know, and, and, and Wieser, who's a very savvy guy, heard all this and he said, we got to step up the game of judo so that we get more throws and we have more action and we have more uh, things that are going to bring ratings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I see Wieser as a guy who sits in the back room and watches a referee and, a, and some guy does a beautiful throw and the referee calls Mate and gives gives somebody a uh, penalty and Wieser goes, get that guy off the air. I mean, you know, that, that it's not, he just ruined our ratings, you know, no. beautiful throw, call it a pun, what uh, the hell is wrong with you? you yeah, know? I totally you know? agree with that, yeah. And, 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 and I think if you understand that mentality, that's the key to refereeing. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, if it looks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, if it, if it falls like a duck, call it a <laughs> beef you know, don't, don't start an article five of page 56 of the manual that, says that he grabbed over here, you know. Those penalties, a, a lot of people don't understand this, but you know, the penalties in judo are to encourage good judo, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. They, 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 a lot of times when a referee's given a penalty, they're actually coaching. Mm -hmm. You know, they're actually telling the player, you're not attacking enough. Mm -hmm. You're being too stiff. Yes. You know, it doesn't look good. It's not good judo. Get to work. Mm -hmm. Here's a warning to you. Okay. So, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's a positive uh, message that, that, you know, we want to we see the beautiful Epon throw. Good, yeah. I agree with that, because that's one thing that I love about judo. Hey, Robert. Great to see you. Thanks for bringing your guys. Yeah. May we look, do this to Santa Clarita? I think we should start taking this out of the, uh, I agree. We we'll have, talk about that. We have two mats. They're a little smaller than the red, but we can do it up there. I, I, we, and we can do it at my club, too, except I don't have access on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, have a safe trip. Anyhow, yeah, the positive judo is... is you know, when you look at all the martial arts, you know, I mean, pawn and judo is, is still uh, like a, like, like just, it, it, it's the Mary Lou Redden moment. You know, it's, a, it's, it's what you want to see. And technically, you know, if you look at it in a very martial arts aspect, you know, if you threw somebody like some of these guys threw today in a street fight and you did it out there on the sidewalk and you landed on them with full impact, they aren't getting back up. No, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's 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 the kill shot. Mm -hmm. You know, it really and, and it and it really is. And and you know, Kano is an infinite wisdom. You know, he did all these jujitsu styles, and he liked the throws. And, and you can see that judo is very much a throwing uh, favoritism of martial art. You know, and and, and 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 really, I've done other martial arts. My kids have done other martial arts. You know, you could do judo for ten years and you still can't do a foot sweep correctly. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just something that happens like, almost like riding a bicycle. One day you wake up and suddenly it works. <laughs> you know, you go, hey, I've been practicing this for 10 years and it finally you know, felt right. <laughs> just clicks after a while. <laughs> but that's what, I, you know, that's what I think frustrates people in the judo, you know, because it takes so damn long to get uh, proficient at it. And, and, you know, Rhonda just had an interview where she was talking Talking about how uh, impactful judo is on the joints, and you know, I hate to say this, but judo by far is the football of the martial arts. It's the roughest. It is. I mean, it, 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 you, I mean, I can't tell you how many things I've had done. Two surgeries on this one, one surgery here, collarbone. You know, I hate to talk about it. Yeah. It, does, it, it doesn't scare so, people off. It doesn't sell really judo. Yeah. But you know, the fact of the matter is, in reality, judo prepares you. Bruce Lee understood that. I mean, Bruce Lee used to work with uh, my friend Gene LaBelle, and they would they would go at it and randori and everything. And Bruce actually came to the conclusion that there is no greater way to practice.
practice your martial art in the Randori and Judo, which, you know, is the Shi'ai uh, that you see here. I mean, you know, you don't need padding, you don't need to wear mouth guards, you, know, you, you can go 100% all out, and, and at the end of the day, a Judo person has a certain level of a confidence, because they've actually done that. They, you know, they didn't yeah. have to go out and get in a real fight and know that they're, that they're what techniques work. That what we yeah. do actually works. Yes, exactly. You know? It's practical fighting. Like our sh our Shiite, our Ronda stuff, it is real fighting. That's Absolutely. Something I, that's something I love about judo and grappling is that you can fight pretty much almost 100% and you can yeah. walk away. You yeah, exactly. It works. Well, I mean, sometimes you get banged up, but I mean, you know, it could be a lot worse yeah. if you didn't know how to fall and if you weren't toughened up from all the uh, training you do. Now, let me ask you another thing. So, like, how we did this little grassroots uh, three club tournament, do you think about expanding this, like having more, more of these with other dojos? Other schools, like I think, I think, it, it, yes, of course. And I, you know, Philippe took the initiative, and you know, that's that's really, if you look at the the, the the sheer essence of judo, you're out moving with an opponent, you're both in a stalemate, the clock's running down, somebody has to uh, decide, I'm going to do a 180 degree tie sabaki and turn into a throw, which a lot of people in other martial arts would say, you're crazy, you're going to give the guy your back, yeah. you're going to do all this, but you know, that's the, that's the moment of truth in judo, and, and, and how's that translate in life? I've, I've been a successful business person, I was the head of sales, and I started my own companies, I made a lot of money in business, and, but I'm telling you, being able to go up to the worst account that says I'll never use your company and say, hey, will you give me a chance to have a meeting with you, or going up to the, the prettiest girl in the class and saying, would you go to the prom with me? Where does that come from? That takes determination, gumption, and the willingness to fail. You know, if you don't, in, in judo, it, the saying is fall down seven times, get up eight. You know, in judo, we learned it. Failure is the key to success. You know, without the without the ability to take a failure, you 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 you, you you're never going to win. And my old friend who doesn't like me anymore, Anne Maria, one time said, and I agree with her emphatically. She said, you know, they gave us all these vaccinations for COVID and everything. Well, I'll tell you, in the judo, you get the vaccination against embarrassment. In judo, you're embarrassment. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you just you just go out there and do it. And you don't, you know, you're not affected by. Uh, a lot of uh, things that are on the surface that don't matter. You, you, you get out there and you do it, you know, and, you, and you take you take that risk. Yeah. And I think that you know judo, judo people live life to the fullest. That's why you know like, after the tournament, we're all out here having pizza. I'm drinking a beer. I mean, you know, if you watched uh, the uh, Tom Cruise movie, The Last Samurai, you know, they're, they're, when they were doing the uh, katana practice and everything, they were going, oh, he's going to get knocked down, and they were laughing at you. That's what judo guys do. Yeah. I mean, and judo women, you know, we, 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 we're able to joke around and roll with the punches. We don't take ourselves too seriously. Where, you know, Kano, in his infamous wisdom, again, said the goal of judo, jiko no kensai, which is perfection of the character. What's that really mean? You know, I've had long talks with my mentor and good friend Hayward Nishioka about this. And to me, what it means is Maslow's self-actualization, the highest the highest level of where you're comfortable in your own skin. You know, people go, Gary, you like to talk too much, get the mic away from him, and laugh about it. You know, it's uh -huh. like, yeah, it's true. What do we want you to say? <laughs> I mean, I know who I am. I know what my proclivities are. Does it stop me? No. <laughs> you know, it just, so what? <laughs> you know, it, 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 that's, I think, ultimately uh, where you know, takes you. Like, comfortable in your own skin, able to laugh at yourself. I like that. I like that. I've never really thought of it that way. Like, oh, yeah. But yeah, it is more so even self confidence. And especially judo, like it we get thrown crazily away and we get back up, you know? Absolutely. What's that old saying they it's from a movie, uh, was it why do we fall down to learn how to get back up? Absolutely. And that's exactly how judo is. Well actually I, 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 years ago, you know, as a sales guru, I went to a lot of sales guru seminars and one of the ones I went to was uh, this guy Tom Hopkins. He came in at a general student, kinda like Patton. And <laughs> and one one of the things he, he had like all these uh, like uh, signs up around the room and one of them was the rule 99 and when he got to it he said here's the rule 99 it takes 99 uh, rejections or uh, no's to get to a yes he said so anytime somebody rejects you when you're when you're when you're pitching for a sale thank them because they might be number 99 <laughs> 
And I, and you know, as soon as he said that, I said, that's, that's Judah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, know, it is. you know, the next time I'm going to throw you with an eat pot. <laughs> I, I really agree with what you said, because people don't know that every time you initiate an attack, you're always opening yourself up to counters. And that's... What, that's, that, that's, that's the risk there you take. That's life. Exactly. That, that, that is, that's the essence of life. You know, you got to take chances. I'm not saying to go skydiving, uh, you know, off, with no parachute. Yeah. But, you know, definitely uh, taking, taking risks is all what judo's about. And here's my good friend. He's been my right-hand man in my judo club, O.J. Solar. And I'm going to tell you exactly what he's going to do. He's going to give me the hook and pull me off. And he's going to say, we got to leave and you're talking too much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank Jerry, he's one of the head instructors of Saltel Judo. Now today we had this little three club scrimmage between Hollywood, Saltel, and uh, Gary Gold's dojo. Yeah. So Jerry, how was it when Philippe came up, came with the idea of listening to a three club scrimmage? How did he come at you with that? Exactly, but when he asked me, I said, we're all in. You're just all in, like, it sounds great to me, I mean, let's do it. <laughs> Felipe and I are good friends, and we talked about this beforehand, and then we said, let's do it. I said, okay, no problem. Yeah, we got gathered up all the guys that were wanting to do this, uh -huh. and everybody was interested, and they jumped right in. This is our second time doing it.
like to see us do in the next tournament other than making the juniors division? Uh, just, yeah. Let's just increase the number of matches and let's put 60 matches in instead of 30. Yeah. This went so fast. I was like, wow. Yeah, that's, that's true. And it's really wow always. All right. Well, it looked like it was like 45 minutes for 31 <laughs> matches. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Really appreciate it. So we are again. It's me, Juan, with Anthony, and our, we're our head instructor here, Sensei Philippe of Hollywood Judo. So today we had, again, the three club scrimmage between Sawtell, Hollywood, and Goats. So Sensei Philippe, how did you come up with this idea of having this little three club scrimmage? Well, two things. That when I was younger, we had a lot of team tournaments. And that was something that was easy to put on a team tournament club between two clubs, or three clubs, like today. So it doesn't require that you have to rent the space somewhere. Um, and then you just call up the sensei and say, look, will you come over on Saturday and bring 10 players? And we'll, we'll do it. We'll have fun. We'll have some pizza after. It's very easy to organize. That's number one. Number two was that during the pandemic, people were depressed. There were no tournaments. We couldn't train properly. And so there were no tournaments being organized. So I figured we do something like this. So back to the old club, club, team encounters. And that's a good way to start, to kickstart things after the pandemic. And now everybody loves it. Um, I don't know if they come for the tournament or for the pizza, but um, <laughs> everybody loves it. And, and we're going to do it every three months here at Hollywood Judo. We're going to have uh, the same tournament. I wish we could invite more clubs, um, but we also we cannot pack in too many people in this building. So it's at maximum capacity now for three clubs. And also the teams are uh, constructed by uh, white belts all the way up to black belts, which makes it interesting, men and, and or women. Um, yeah, so that's how that came about. That's, okay. Yeah. So from our first time holding it back in November to now holding it, where were some of the big changes from the first time to the second time? Were there some improvements? Yeah, the first time was kind of an experiment, and, and we learned from that. The first time was very good. But this time we wanted to spice it up a little bit, so we, we brought back the old um, uh, concept of all the white keys. Before they had colored keys, so we had the white keys, and we had the red and white belt on the two contestants instead. So that was one thing. We also brought in a medic, because we didn't have a medic last time. Um, what else did we change? Not much. That, that was just about it. Now, with also with one thing that we had, to, we had to actually change, well not change, but just adapt to, is that the new rule set. Did you think the new rule sets really affected judo today? Do people like get them? Are people getting a lot of shido sport? What do you think of the new rules that's being implemented today? Yeah, well, they've been implementing new rules for the last 10 years and experimenting and changing, going back and forth. And I think it takes a little while before the competitors get used to the new rules. And they've been changing them so much so some people don't even bother finding out what the new rules are. Yeah, that's true. good. That's good that we, <laughs> we you know point that out during training sessions. That now you can do this before you could do that, now you cannot do this and so on and so on. But it takes a while before it kicks in because you train hard to, for one training style and you build your techniques according to that style and then all of a sudden something's taken away from you or changed then you have to change your way of competing a little bit also so it takes time. It takes time yeah. Was it hard to actually find players? I know we're a big competition school, Hollywood, we love competition, we, we thrive on it. Was it hard to find people to come do the competitions at the smaller tournaments? I know like me personally, I only compete at big tournaments. I compete at nationals and states pretty much now. Olympics? Oh, Oh, yeah, you know, next one I'll be there mm. as a ref, a judge. I'll be in the back getting water. I'm here, aren't I? <laughs> uh, I believe it when I see it, yeah. Hey, when we're here in LA, I plan to try to help out already. He's gonna come with me and you're gonna come with me Well, was it hard to get people to come? Yes, but also because not everybody have been staying in shape during the pandemic. I mean, our dojo was closed for 14 months and we just, you know, we opened, when did we open? April? April, March, April. Yeah, yeah March, April, we opened of last year. Yeah. <laughs> 
So we're still struggling with the, the advanced classes having people to come back. Um, but it's picking up also now, very, very new last week, it's that we can train without masks. And a lot of people are coming back because of this, because they got tired of training with masks. It's tiring and it's it, it was boring for, for many and they didn't want to deal with it. But now we're fully operational like we were before the pandemic. So I expect more people to come back. Yeah. Now, so this is our second tournament. Is there anything you want to improve or change for, for upcoming ones? Because you plan on doing this every three months yeah. or so. Yeah, what we'll do next time, because today we had 31 matches, and they went back by pretty fast. Yeah, we, yeah, uh, was, we, we talked about we that. We burned before. through this yeah. really quick. We did 31 matches in under an hour. Yeah. Under an hour. That's crazy. Also, because this time we only had one golden score. Yeah. And last time we had a lot of golden scores. That's what I, I don't know why, but it just turned out that way. Yeah. So I think next time what we'll do, when we're done all the matches, we can also start doing best of three instead of just one encounter between two players you can do best of three then we drag it out even more yeah. that might double the time double the time uh, the stamina requirement will be pretty yeah intense. yeah well since we're here anyway it's like three hours on, on a sunday afternoon and, and why not you know it's a lot better than than traveling far way in in the morning and wait till 5 p.m till you have your first match this format is actually beneficial for everyone and i think uh, what we'll do next time also that when the tournament our tournament here is over we'll do extra matches for people that just want to stay and practice competition we just do extra matches mm -hmm. outside of our tournament for like half an hour or something something like that yeah it sounds great yeah it's fantastic yeah all right anthony is there anything you want to ask yeah i mean you asked everything about the, the gripping rules already but uh I think I don't. I'm good. You're good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Since if leave, is there anything you want to tell the audience about our ju about our judo here at Hollywood, about our dojo? Yeah, uh, we're celebrating our 90th anniversary this year. This club's been around since 1932. It's a very special year for us, and we also have a new belt system that we implemented. We have a new um, new classes: uh, beginners, adults, kids. Um, so the club is really doing well. Um, I'm very happy to be a part of this club. We'll try to be forever. I'm happy that you're here too. Thank you very really much. Appreciate thank it. you, thank you, thank you. Um, also, on Saturdays, we have open roundery here at Hollywood. And I've been invited lots of clubs over the years and try to get players to come and do roundery with us just for one hour, Saturday, every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. If you're a minimum of a green belt, and you belong to any of the three accepted judo organizations in the U.S., you can come and train with us. Uh, just one hour of roundery every Saturday from 2 to 3. So that's an open invitation and something that we also do to strengthen the judo community, actually. I already had a few people come up to me and say, wow, your mats are so soft. Like, yeah. I'm going to start coming by on Saturdays. I like heard. people yeah. appreciate our mats, finally. Thank yeah. you. They were expensive. They <laughs> yeah. better appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're not messing them up yeah. either. Seriously, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Thank, you, thank, thank really you very much for it. everything you guys do for judo, for Hollywood judo. You know, with your, your tatami talk and with your teaching mm -hmm. of all our students. Really appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. Wow, what great interviews were that, man. Did you expect that to happen? That was amazing, I was amazed by that. No, I'm yeah. joking. <laughs> I mean, we don't, we don't have like the perfect audio equipment, so there was people like right after the <laughs> tournament, they were really like running on adrenaline and socializing, they're like, man, that, that throw you did was awesome, like you can show me how to do it. So there was a lot of people talking in the back. Yeah. There's a lot of people talking back. Some of our own students are trying to clean up and I appreciate them having to clean up, but I'm trying to talk right here to somebody and they're clanging chairs. I'm like, hey, give me some time, but. Maybe I won't cut that out then. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, no, no, please cut that out. Or I want it to be a secret ending, all right? You gotta pay to see that one. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was very good interviews right there. Uh, Goltz had a, had a lot to say. Goltz has been around for a long time, knows a lot about judo, knows a lot about Southern California and all the federations. Yeah. Philippe brought out how he came up with the idea and Jerry was just like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. So I thought some great little things to talk about right there. Yeah, so in the future, maybe we can invite them on to have a longer discussion and get their views on judo and mm -hmm. uh, how they- Well, people would know about something Philippe Perry did interview yeah. with him. We can yeah, do another interview with Philippe, maybe. Yeah, I'm talking about the other senseis. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. 
All right. So is there anything else, Anthony? Uh, that's that? it. Yeah. That's it? Okay. So yeah, so this is a little short episode, people. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, check out our, um, we streamed it on Twitch. Twitch.tv so, slash the Tommy Talk, yeah. Oh shit, he did it on his own. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so yeah, check that out. We're going to try to do some of the live stream stuff, try to do some things, have some fun with it. Um, like always, like, share, and subscribe. You can follow us at the Tommy Talk on Instagram. You can follow us at the Tommy Talk on YouTube. You want to send us any questions, you want us to go over things you want us to talk about, send us to TommyTalk at gmail.com. You want to follow me, it is the Jerry underscore Juan. You can follow, follow Anthony, it is Anthony Throws. Both of those are on Instagram itself. Is that it? Yep. All right. You want to start it? You want to say it this time? Well, we actually slapped the mat. You want to slap the mat? Yeah, we slap the mat. So, so don't, forget don't forget to, to slap the mat. <laughs>